Hey guys, Vegan Cyclist here. So today I'm talking about caffeine and does it make you a better athlete, right? Just in general, does it make you actually perform better? And uh, so I was able to sit down with Felicia Gomez. She is phenomenal. She coaches some uh, pro tour level racers uh, for cycling and she's just got a, she's a wealth of knowledge for caffeine. She's done a ton of studies. She's been around a lot of studies. So if there's anyone that knows about caffeine, it's her, she's awesome. So I sat down with her and I asked her a bunch of questions, right? First question is, what is caffeine? So caffeine is something called a methylxanthine. Um, it's a class of drugs uh, to try methylxanthine. Um, and like I said, it, it is a drug. It's actually the most commonly used drug in the world. It's found in a lot of food. It's found in a lot of drinks. Um, it's got three derivatives that it gets broken down into, paraxanthine, theobromine and theophylline. All right, so caffeine is a trimethylene, and when it enters your body, it basically breaks down into these three derivatives, paraxanthine, theobromine, and theophylline. Uh, theobromine is what's found in chocolate a lot. That's why dogs will die if they eat too much chocolate because they can't process that theobromine. Uh, and then theophylline is found in tea a bunch. Now, it is the most commonly used drug in the world, and it's classified as a drug because it affects your central nervous system. Now, one of the biggest reasons why it's the uh, largest, most used, commonly used drug in the world is because of the effects it has on your adenosine receptors. But we're not talking about that, right? We're talking about performance. So I had a question, and that is, is all caffeine equal, right? Is like a Red Bull and a coffee and a powdered caffeine, a no-dose, whatever. I mean, is the caffeine in all of these items the same? Right. Well, what's the caffeine molecule itself is exact same. Okay. Okay, what's different, and I think I was telling you this, um, people equate the performance effects of caffeine, they equate it across all caffeine-containing products. And there are studies out there that show that that's not true. So yeah, basically caffeine, the molecule is totally the same, but the effects that you receive are different. And she went on to tell me about this awesome experiment that was done that kind of blew my mind. So um, my PhD advisor did a study years ago where there were five um, treatments. There was placebo, because you always want placebo. There was pure caffeine. There was uh, regular coffee. There was decaf coffee. And then there was decaf coffee with the caffeine added back into it. Okay. All the caffeine-containing products had the same amount of caffeine, or the um, caffeine trials. Mm -hmm. And in each trial, they um, ingested the same amount of fluid. And they did a, it was on a treadmill, they did a run to exhaustion so till they couldn't run anymore at, I believe it was 70 or 75% of their VO2 max. It might have been a bit higher, I'd have to look at the study. Um, and the only treatment to provide a performance enhancing effect was pure caffeine. All right, so for this uh, experiment, they had five controls. They had placebo, they had coffee, they had decaf, coffee and then they had decaf coffee but then caffeine added back into it so like powdered caffeine added back into that and then just pure caffeine they had the participants basically run till exhaustion right so it's an exhaustion test they get on a treadmill and they're just ah, hitting it smashing it and uh, basically they run till they can't run anymore and the results were that the only performance enhancing item was the pure caffeine even though all of these controls had the same amount of caffeine same amount of liquid uh, I mean it's just really kind of crazy so what that means is that from a performance enhancing perspective there's something in coffee that counteracts the impact of caffeine from a metabolic performance enhancing okay. point of view not i mean caffeine and coffee will still elevate heart rate it will still elevate blood pressure it will still make you feel more alert i know if i don't have my coffee then i'm going to be pretty grumpy pretty quick so when you add in all this different stuff the the caffeine molecule for some reason binding with all of these uh, extra additives just don't give you any performance. So when I smash a gel that's got 200 milligrams of caffeine, I'm not really getting a performance benefit. Okay. So no. it's just or their espresso that they're sitting there, you know, drinking an hour prior to their race now. Uh -huh. Or the caffeine in the gel that they're taking now. None of it. It's their performance enhancing effect isn't due to the caffeine. When I take a gel, whether it has caffeine in it or not, or, uh -huh. you know, I bought um, some salt tabs from REI, I can get salt tabs with caffeine or without caffeine. Yeah. 
the caffeine's not gonna provide an ergogenic effect. There, first of all, there's too little of it. So then she goes on here to talk a little bit about dosages, which um, kind of gets a little bit complicated, but, uh, but yeah, so kind of saying that, you know, a lot of these gels um, don't even have enough caffeine in them to, to reach the, the point at which you would see any sort of benefits. Um, so I kind of asked her, you know, well, what, what is that? What's the minimum amount of caffeine you would need to see some sort of benefits? I'm just going to do 2.5 milligrams per kilogram of body weight. It's about 182 okay. milligrams. And a cup of coffee has about 150, depending on how the coffee has been brewed. So she basically says like uh, two and a half milligrams to three milligrams per kilogram of body weight. So for me, being 160 pounds, that means about 150 to 200 milligrams of caffeine uh, to get any sort of uh, benefit, right? Uh, or start to feel the effects of it. Um, Performance-wise, you know, yeah, 200 milligrams is going to give me some kind of actual athletic advantage over someone who doesn't. Now, if that's if I take pure caffeine, if I just drink two Red Bulls or a coffee or something like that, I'll still feel um, up and alert and the adenosine thing I talked about earlier, that all is going to still affect and, and come into play. But as actually having a performance enhancement benefit, yeah, I'm looking at like two and a half milligrams to three milligrams per uh, kilogram body weight. So if it's scientifically proven that you can get an athletic ad advantage to consuming caffeine, pure caffeine, why is it not a PED? Why is it not a performance enhancing drug? And this is on all banned lists for all sorts of sports. Yeah, Guy it used to be caffeine. a controlled substance. In other words, there used to be a limit. The IOC, I think the NCAA still has that limit. You'd have to look that up, uh -huh. I'm not 100% sure. Um, but the IOC, there used to be a limit on the amount of caffeine that you um, were allowed to have in your system. And I think that the limit, you'd have to take about 12 to 13 milligrams per kilogram of body weight. Wow. So anybody, there, but there have been, and I don't remember the name, I think it was an 800 meter runner years ago, probably 10, maybe 15 years ago, was found to have too much caffeine in her system. So she had to have taken a lot of caffeine, which is pretty stupid. And she tested positive. That was considered a positive drug test. Since then, the IOC has lifted that, so there is no limit. Um, you ask why. I'm not sure why they lifted that limit. I think that they should probably still have it. Mm -hmm. um, but the reason they can't ban caffeine at all is because it's just in everything. So like obviously you can't ban caffeine because so many people use it, right? And and the thing is that the window of athletic performance is so small, um, you know, that it's just one of those things. Like it's Let's just make it legal for everyone because it's not like a huge game changer. Um, but uh, but yeah, it would be so hard to try to say, well, how much did you have? How much didn't you have? Because you know the chart kind of looks something like this, where you know uh, the the more caffeine you take, and then you start to actually d your performance decreases because you get all jittery and crazy and weird. But so like, how much better could I actually be, right? Like if I if I ingest some caffeine and and you do not. How, what kind of advantage does that actually give over me and is it significant? So first of all, it appears that it's very individualistic. In other words, it appears that some people respond and some people don't. To so answer your question, you know, what percent increase, it depends on the length of the event. So what she goes on to say is, is really a lot of the research is showing it's the duration of, of the effort that makes kind of the biggest difference, right? So if we're talking about an hour, um, you, could, you could see a, a significant advantage over a placebo, right? So like your graph kind of looks something like this to where um, the, the more time that you are uh, doing the event, the greater advantage you're gonna get. Now, this doesn't necessarily mean that at, at shorter durations of high intensity, like say like track sprinting or something, you're not receiving any, some so, any sort of benefit, but it's so small, the margins are so small that it might be difficult to say that that is um, attributed straight to caffeine. Right, um, but you know some of the sprinters will win by 0 .01 seconds, and if caffeine gives you a 0 .01 second uh, advantage, I mean, on some levels, that could be winning or losing because you ingested a a relatively small amount of caffeine. So this is kind of a a, a real controversial uh, deal here. I mean, this is legal performance enhancing drugs available to the amateur ranks of all sports, 
right? Um, now, if you take caffeine in a, in a pure form, powdered form, this isn't like no dose, because no dose is unregulated, and I mean, you really probably need to find some legitimate caffeine tablets, but you can get a athletic advantage, and it be a significant one depending on the duration of your event. So is this fair? Is this cheating? You know, I mean, what do you guys think? Do you guys drink caffeine? Uh, you know, this video, what do you guys think about, about this type of research? Guys, thank you so much. Check all my other stuff out. Vegan Cyclist. Yeah.